What's good, YouTube? Just here to report the Danilo Gallinari trade to the Hawks. And Denver just going to get second a second-round pick. Basically, you get rid of Danilo. He was ready to go. He, he ready to get more minutes. He, he just ready to be a part of something different and compete. And at the end of the day, they was going to have to pay Jokic. They got to pay Murray. And they had to spend a lot of money on Paul Millsap. This gives them some cap. Because they just get, they don't have to extend Danilo and they get a pick in return. Atlanta, they get Jamal Crawford, Diamond Stone, and a future first round pick in 2000 next year. So this this trade to me is, is decent. They get Jamal Crawford on a great contract. He can still play, he can still help you win, he can still give you some juice, even though he can be a starter some days, just depending if you get an injury. He can pick up the slack because Atlanta, they, str they struggle to score a little bit. He gives them a ball handler. He gives them a person that can make shots late in the shot clock, early in the shot clock. Just give them a playmaker. So I like that they pick Jamal Crawford back up. And I don't really know too much about Diamond Stone, so I can't really speak up on him. And you get a pick in return. The Hawks, they got to build through the draft. Because they let Paul, they let Paul Millsap and Dwight Howard go. Cause they said they didn't. Even, Paul Millsap he didn't even get an offer from Atlanta. So they they trade Dwight Howard. They get rid of Paul. They let Paul Millsap walk. They got a lot of cap space. They just extended Schroeder. They gotta pay Tim Hardaway if they want to keep him. Torian, Torian Prince. He's a good solid player. He's only gonna get better from here. They got Schroeder, Hardaway, Prince, then. You got some solid players. You could take a gamble up on Diamond Stone. Jamal Crawford is a professional. He's going to come in there, de deliver, and help guide the team and be a, lock, a good locker room present. He also can be a buyout target next year. Well, going into February for the trade deadline, you can either trade him, get a pick back, a second-round pick, or you can just buy him out and just get the salary cap, which they'll need to pay all their players in the future and so they don't have to pay the luxury tax. So... To me, it's a solid deal, and for the Clippers, you get Danilo. They was looking for a wing. He's not a, a defender. He, he can't stop Kawhi. He can't stop KD. He can't stop none of those players, but he gives you a person that can put the ball on the floor. Basically got a lot of skills for his size. He's not an older guy. He can stretch out the floor for Blake and DeAndre to get – to be in the paint and for the for sometimes Blake gonna post up and it gives him somebody to kick out to on the corner because Danilo is a sniper from three he fell off a little bit but he's still decent at it but gives him a spot up shooter in the three pointer and they still got Beverly they still got Lou they still got their bench Sam Decker Harold they and they got another pick coming in which they just traded so the Clippers, this is I don't like it because they don't really need uh this contract. He's only on sixty million three years. It's not terrible. It's not horrible, but he's not gonna make that much of a difference defensively. They could have. He's just gonna be a skilled big that can play the four small ball four, and he can just play the three and stretch out the floor and hoist up threes and break down the defense every once in a while and get some lobs and some dunks. To Blake and DeAndre, but the Clippers as a team, uh, I'm just gonna see what they're gonna do. They're not a terrible team. They're not horrible. They're decent. Obviously, they need to make more moves to get back what they lost with Chris Paul. They need more stars, basically. What I'm saying. And the thing about it is, DeAndre Jordan only got one more year on his contract. So if he doesn't want to stay with the Clippers, either move him now and get something, or DeAndre, like you seen with the Mavericks, he really wanted to leave the Clippers. So if DeAndre wants to leave the Clippers, he can leave next year for nothing. Or you can just try to get something back for him too and see what you got. Because DeAndre might not resign because he already tried to leave before. And now that they're weaker and worse, he can pretty much say, hey, I don't want to play here either. And I want to go test out free agency and see where I can go. So DeAndre might be the next target to move, but if he doesn't, you got a year of Blake and DeAndre being your focal point in your offense, your two best players, and Danilo, he's a good third, fourth, fifth option, and he still can play, and he still can contribute to a team, and he's a veteran, he knows his role, he can play within the offense, he doesn't have to force up shots, he doesn't have to do too much, he goes into a team with talent, so he can just play within the offense and get some easy buckets, 
He's going to have some hot games during the season. And this is just a solid pickup. Obviously, I'd rather have Jamal Crawford, but they need they in, the, they in need of a small forward, so it makes sense. And they still got Austin Rivers and other players that they just got from the Chris Paul trade to come off that bench. So this just solidifies their three spot, and it gives them the floor space that they need and the person that doesn't need the ball to be effective. So they're going to be running most of their offense through Blake Griffin, through pick and roll, through pick and pop, and him creating off the dribble and, po and in the post. And... You're going to see a lot of Blake Griffin and DeAndre in low post, high post, low post, high post action because DeAndre can catch lobs and Blake Griffin can hit the jumper or he can beat other power forwards off the dribble and go to the paint, which can open up for lobs too, or kick out to Patrick Beverly and Danilo Gallinari. <laughs> so this will, this will be a solid trade for them. Not groundbreaking, not going to change the outlook of the team. It just solidified their three spot with a quality veteran that doesn't need the ball to be effective and can play his role and be a professional. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. Check out my website, AnalysisPlayground.com. It'll be in the description and the comment section below. Also, check out my Facebook page, AnalysisPlayground.com. It'll be in the description and the comment section below. All you got to do is click the link and then send you right to my Facebook page. Like to show support. Thank you guys for watching. It's been one hell of a free agency. You basically got to stay up throughout the whole day just to report all this news. But we'll see what happens in the future. And we'll see what happens with the Clippers. I like the roster. They're not too far behind. They're not too deep in a rebuilding. And they probably still can win 45, 40, 48 games. Because Doc Rivers is an exceptional coach. And now that they got the three, the four, and the five solidified, and Patrick Beverly most likely going to pay the one, and they also said they might get Derrick Rose. So that can change the outlook of this team too because they give them an aggressive point guard that can make shots easier for Blake and DeAndre if he if he wants to pass because Derrick Rose can get tunnel vision a little bit too. So we'll wait and see on the Derrick Rose thing. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. Quinn Wade, basketball, and I'll just sign out.